dum 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 bum 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 all right uh <clears throat> so the this is the AVG American something American video game league I'll grand do it, finals American oh shit do you, have some, finals, do you have the stream um, playing? The qualifier tournament in uh, in October. Exactly. So I was uh, casting the draft earlier and really talking about the synergy between the various heroes. We have the Faceless Void who got through, as well as the Skywrath. Excellent synergy, synergizing combo there with the Wraith King off lanes, Shadow Shaman. And Ember Spirit, I uh, Shadow Shaman support as well with the Ember Spirit mid. Do you think the Death Prophet or the Templar Assassin is going to be made up against the Ember Spirit? Um, every PP is far more reliant on levels as opposed to the uh, the TA. Yeah, although both are totally. pretty heavily <laughs> level reliant. Um, <laughs> what I would say is I think the DP will be mid. She fares decently against the Ember, seeing as he's nearly. And her silence is good against him. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're into game. Uh, we'll introduce the dire team with Pumpkin on the DP heading towards top, with the uh, Ventral Cookie Attic on the Ventral Spirit, and the Atreus on the Dazzle, looking like it's trailing top with the uh, Templar Assassin mid with 9412 playing him, as well as Sionar on the Centaur bot. On the um, for the Radiant side, we've got the Righteous Turtle. The war looking to get into the off lane as of the faceless void. We have uh, the DJ posturing towards mid on the Ember Spirit. We have Dismal Scientist placing a Rune Ward. <laughs> um, generally not one you'd see placed on the top of the river for uh, Radiant, uh, but he's on the Shadow Shaman. We got Skyrath Mage. Uh, Boom will be handling him. And lastly, we've got what I'm the looking at. I think this is a uh, carry Wraith King by Z80. So, uh, so the horn goes and we're getting to it. game. <laughs> also, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So what I'm gonna say, my view on this game right now is um, that the the Dyer's draft is a little bit more interesting because uh, the DP. Um, I don't think the DP is a traditional carry, but she seems to have built like a uh, safe lane carry. Um, and I'm not sure how this is going to go, because if the supports are inefficient with how they handle um, her levels, she could be very far behind. She really needs those four levels in Crypt Swarm and Witchcraft in order to be fully effective. Um, generally, you see most DPs pick up Exorcism, or it's generally mo most efficient at level 9 um, for mid. But judging as her levels are going to be a bit slower than uh, the traditional mids, I think uh, I, I honestly don't like it much. I think the TA yeah, would have been I, a better choice as a carry. Yeah, I do agree that they definitely did pick up the uh, TA mid after um, after the DP, and I'm not sure if they intended the DP to be mid and then rotate him top with the TA pick, or if they decide instead to uh, just to, to generally like uh, get pick the TA to deal with whatever comes their way. Although I do think that they probably should have done a TA top with the DP mid, but you know that's how it works out. Now, one interesting thing is um, the Faceless Void decided to block the uh, hard camp on the uh, on the dire side instead of choosing to block the pull camp, and I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, generally, if you're looking for vision, a good ward would be right there. Um, mm -hmm. I guess he's Agreed. looking to prevent the double pull. Yeah, definitely the double. And even then, he put it pretty far inside the camp. He could have put it out a bit to get some vision, like, up here, looking up here, just so he can see who crosses there. But instead, he puts it in deep inside the camp. So, uh, we'll see how that turns out for him, uh, really, at this level, double pull, etc. Now, if we look at mid, uh, T is about to pick up a double damage rune, and she also is outlast hitting the Ember pretty heavily as well as getting decent harass. If you look at the Ember, he's down to 200, almost 300 HP, whereas TA is full HP, full mana, pretty much. So this is looking to be a heavy win for the, uh, the Dire mid. For the, yeah, for the yeah the Ember Spirit's definitely going to have some issues here. And uh, so she also has a point in uh, Meld with the DD Rune. That's not fun to deal with.
Alright, no, we're looking at the top, we're looking at the fist yeah, that's for it's stuck in the trees. Not quite, but hiding inside the trees. This is what only has fine. two levels. He, he will get away, but that was a very precarious positioning by him. And he's also falling behind on levels, considering he's an offlane boy. He's only level 2, with the DP already level 3. The Daz are also level 2, and the uh, Ventral Spirit also level 2. So the Void Fitzel's Void has absolutely not gotten any level advantage, but completely zoned out by the Dazzle. So, well... If you look at the uh, centaur, his levels are relatively comparable to the faceless void, so I think that that's fine trade. Yeah. I don't Did like I... the way that these teams are running their supports right now. Um, until now, Dyer has had all three supports in lane for most of the game, and I think that this is, you know, um, that's inefficient with your XP division and so on. But now we see the vengeful doing the goal. Um But unfortunately, because he doesn't have a double stack gonna push the lane and Void's gonna get more experience. Yeah, definitely. And um, we do see the, uh, th neither of them have a smoke, but they are pushing in towards mid, but the uh, Radiant Ward does spot them out, so the Ember should play pretty uh, passively now, um, oh, expecting the, the right gank from them. He's also missing out on the last hit. He only has uh, 9 to TA's 25. Yeah, TA is truly dominating her lane right now. Absolutely. And uh, we see Sireth, um kind of pushing out towards mid See with the Shadow Shaman. We'll see if they try to make something happen. Perhaps a smoke. smoke up. And uh, if they're going to go mid or bot. We seem well, kind of unsure. Are they going to head towards mid? You see there's a dire observer um, towards Maybe the rune, and it's possible tower. that they just saw the rune go get taken. Yeah. If, if they were watching it, they should have seen it. Also, you should have seen the heroes disappear from the map, but it could have been attributed to just the edge of fog. Edge of vision. They do, the, they are spotted out by the Dazzle, so there's no um, surprises there. TA has uh, three points in uh, refraction, so she should be able to survive uh, quite a bit. But they oh will boy. come in. They, the Dazzle TP reaction, TA is still alive, one charges keep her alive, her metal com her refraction blood. comes up, they get first blood on the Ember, the um, Dazzle will go down, TA hit, keeps hitting, gets another kill on the uh, Shadow Shaman, will go down to uh, the Skywrath, and uh, that was a fairly even trade, but first blood did go the way of, D of Dire. Uh, no, I think that's probably better for Radiant as it gives... Um well, actually, I'm not sure. Honestly, I do think it's a relatively even trade, but the kill on the Templar is going to be uh, quite valuable, although the Ember Spirit was set back as well. So yeah. um, She did buy out practically before she died, so she didn't lose too much there, um, oh being yeah. able to get her face boots not too late. Up top, we have the, um, the Death Prophet. Um, approaching level 6, we'll see if, and also Tower's taking quite a bit of damage, and the uh, Faceless still only level 4. We'll see if, uh, DP decides to, um, decides to, uh, go straight for the Exorcism at level 6, or if she decides to put, uh, um, two more points into, uh, Witchcraft. No. Also, the farm on the tables is looking pretty good. Spirit being dove. Uh, incredible damage from the Templar Assassin, she takes him down. I think they they could go for the, uh, oh yeah, look at this, look at the damage. They're going for the d mid. dive easily, and she will have uh, plenty of health for the wand charges, and she has a uh, bottle, no worries for her. Faceless Void's going onto the DP right now, but we've got TP reaction as well as exorcism. Uh, yeah, and there's, the there's a follow-up kill. Shadow Shaman does go down. We also have the Centaur and Dazzle both TPing top, so we'll see if that how that turns out. We do have a TP from the Skywrath, um, only also level six. Uh, the Faceless Void, however, is only level five, so they cannot do a Chrono and Timistic Flare. There is a dive going in with the top tower being practically done. Um, although they did dive instead of going for the tower, um, so the Exorcism didn't do much damage to that. We have mid the mid battle continuing. 41 last hits and 20 denies to Ember's 17 last hits. Yeah, this is really gruesome. Dia is absolutely controlling 
uh, controlling the lane right now. And if you look DP as well, uh, the Wraith King has been farming horribly efficiently. He only has 20, 22 last hits in a free lane, which is just embarrassing. Consider uh, he's been like there that. alone for most of the game. Yeah, he's been going against the Centaur offlane. That's nothing to challenge. It's no darks here. Yeah. So. Radiance middle tower yeah, Ember Spirit attack. only has a, a circlet. That's his only major item of note. He's he's falling behind pretty hard, and uh, so Dyer is really taking a commanding lead. If we look at the um, net worth right now, uh, it's disgusting. TA is higher net worth than both the Wraith King and Ember Spirit combined. Yeah, this is really bad. And uh, TA is not a hero that you want to farm with. Doing some dewarding, but um, definitely. Uh, a question of who's gonna really uh, pull out here as of the moment it's dire. The faceless void Centaur. is level six, so I'd be looking for uh, for Radiant to really try and make something happen with that Skyrath and Faceless Void combo. They Absolutely. really need something to go their way right now, and I think that could be something. Yeah, and unfortunately the other TA, she's level eight and uh, has meld on so even if they do get a chrono on her, because that's who they need to get. They need to get the faceless. Full, uh, they need to get the TA. They need to slow down her uh, progression, because she's really the one who's snowballing out of control. And a TA, a fat TA, is not a fun thing to deal with, especially with her survivability. So we've got Dazzle and Vengeful posturing towards mid right now, um, but I think Dazzle is in sight, especially with it being daylight and all. So. I don't think anything mm -hmm. is going to come up with this, just some inundation. They, this means I think DP, that they, however, is solo, and I think that really, um, get to level void should be trying to get something going there. Yeah, right now, there, there we is, go. Chrono. But it's not doing very much damage. Shackle, the shackle will him. be able to shackle. There we go. There we go. That was a, that was a that long was time to kill her, though. The Dazzle TP top, but did not make it in time yeah, to shackle Yeah, but the way the eventual gave away her position meant that it was, uh... It was a relatively obvious, obvious opportunity yeah. for them. And now yeah. you see the Wraith King going on, uh, going on the Centaur bot. Dazzle. He has stun in one second, but he's gonna opt. He has to reincarnation. Him. He has reincarnate. He could easily no, dive. If get he him. tosses it, he won't have the mana. That's true. He tosses the yeah. stun, yeah. Yeah, the the um, Wraith Fire Blast. We have top once again with the chrono down. They're pretty comfortable pushing in with um, DP's exorcism off cooldown. They will be able to get this top tower. Yeah, about to if... Oh, she picks up the Skyrath Mage, forces some TP's, and there's the shackle. Let's see if Here's this shackle. Anything comes of this? Her fraction is yeah, down uh, for two seconds. Oh, the center uh, just misses the stomp, but. Um, should be able to save the TA and no casualties done there. Top tower goes does go down and faceless voice taking a Boy's lot of damage. Silence is so long. Oh, uh, but he gets out. Oh, he manages to get away. He managed to just get away. But the poison tech might get him. Nope, backtracks the poison damage. He backtracks the last two ticks what of poison a damage. What a play by him. <laughs> so Excursion yeah, comes out. Right yeah, she saved Exorcism for the tier 2. Probably a wise choice because they knew they had the tier 1 in the bag. And the Dazzle Weave, lasting for another uh, another couple of seconds, will let them tank the tower hits and possibly tick down the tower. Yes, they will. So there's a double tower take right there. And bot Great tower. Game, meanwhile, is pushing tier 1 bot. But he does not go for the tower. He's not going for the t tower. Is really in deny been, range. Uh, disappointing me is how I'll put it. Yeah, he. Okay, he has enough mana. Yeah. There will be the stomp. Once again, the stun. He's gonna go and, down. Uh, He's gonna he toss will the stun take out there. the. They are denying it now. They're about to deny um, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, five man now rotation is about to be uh, proved pretty much worthless unless, unless they can find something out of this.
Yeah. Faceless Void does have his ult and Sky Wrath as well, so they can make something happen. Searing Chains oh comes out in the DP. Voice of Void ult will get a crown and Great a Mystic Flare work. on this guy, on the thing. The, the, the uh, wants the um, Serpent Wards placed in range of the tower, able to deal damage to the both heroes and the tower, taking down the DP and the Centaur. We have the TA completely ignoring everything that's going on, taking down mid tower, and the Dazzle and Vengeful just staying away, letting them take, a, giving them a free tier two. But there will be no further push due to the Chrono and the wards being used. There's nothing left for them to push with. The thing is, right now, the uh, the Radiant are playing against essentially a ticking time bomb. The uh, the Templar Assassin has three Kai higher net worth than anybody from Radiant in the game. Um, and as we saw earlier in the tournament, this player, 9412, can absolutely carry on Templar Assassin. Um, and I think in general, absolutely. this is a hero that, uh, especially with Refraction, is going to be tough to get through and tough to kill, even for Void. Um, I think that yeah. once she picks up a Manta or whatever she decides to go, like a Desolator, especially with all the squishy heroes um, right now that Radiant has, four of them to be exact, it's going to be really tough for them to deal with this uh, damage output. Yeah. I would not be surprised if she decided to go for a blink um, just to position herself if she has support from her team. Um, the blink could be really well good, useful for oh, her position. Oh boy, just made a big mistake right there. Oh, backtrack, but not enough. Yeah, he just absolutely destroyed that. Yeah, like we said, 9-4-1-2 really knows how to play TA. It's more that an absolute mistake from the Fences Void. He, he leaped into a regen rune, so he didn't have oh. his leap, and uh, that, that's, that obviously got that killed. Was, that was terrible. Got initiation made from the Centaur on the Wraith King, or excuse me, on the Skywrath Mage, and wow, huge damage. Totally blew up completely. The Dazzle wrapping around, but um, just in time for the Ember Spirit to... Ember Spirit bought, um, but the tower does go down. Um, we have, now we have... Uh, all the tier 1 towers on on the Radiant side. We have uh, 5 heroes congregating on 4 heroes congregating on bot. Th this Ember Spirit is screwed. He has no remnants anywhere to jump to. He is absolutely screwed. The yep, stomp secures go. the kill. As you said, Ember Spirit always have a runaway remnant. Especially when you're by yourself so far out. Also, really we need vital. to note that... The, we need to note the vision on this map. If you look at the radiant vision, they have two. They can notice who crosses the river, but they can't notice um, once going through the jungle. So from mid into the jungle, they have no idea what's going on. So their warding is less than optimal. They left huge gaps going into through mid. Yeah, well, their warding is essentially early game warding. They're looking at um, warding Faces where. Void Chrono. Catches three. Oh, yeah. Faces foot. Mystic Flare gets um gets the centaur. They do get the um uh ventral spirit. Shadow um, uh, oh. uh, <laughs> um DP the kept part, alive. Kept alive by Shadow Grief. Decides to turn around and throw out a Crypt Swarm dealing very little damage to three full heroes. I have no idea what TA, that was all about. TA, it, it's 5 before this whole game with TA being by herself the whole time. She's never really participated in a fight. She gets her kills, but she's not been running around with the team. She's not been uh, gold, participating. Though. She has 3,000 gold right now. This is scary. Do what she's she has 3,000 gold, but there are 5 heroes rotating oh, onto her. Oh, Wraith King she probably can't do this. She, he probably can't. Uh, the v Remnant comes out, zips up, 1 against 3, oh, gets a kill Jesus. on the Shadow Shaman. She okay. will most likely go down, unless no, she does yeah. not. She will go down. That was not a wise decision on her part, but nevertheless, a bit she's still there, cocky. Absolutely one-shotted the Shadow Shaman. She buys up her two, uh, her two Mithril hammers. Clearly going for a Desolator here. Yes, yeah, that, exactly. I did notice that in her last game earlier, she decided to go for the Desa into Manta just to take out towers. They get a jump on the Vengeful. She was too far out of position and they pick her off.
She actually four stepped in to get closer to the Skyrath Mage, and then none of her team backed her up. I think she was just <laughs> left looking uh, for teammates there, but there are none to be found. Yeah. Especially yeah. with the what TA she needs down, to they do don't really want to fight. Yeah, she needs to swap, turn around, and four staff out, not four staff in. Yeah, yeah. she wouldn't have reached the Skyrath though, unfortunately. No. And the jaw's closed shut. Um, so we have a bunch of heroes congregating mid with, of course, the TA by herself again bot. Gonna farm up a huge creep, creep wave bot, and we'll um, be able to uh, be well on our way to her uh, desolator. We have five heroes on the radiant. We have eight heroes mid, all except for the Wraith King and the TA. Are mid. There's a standoff. Each team staying on their side of the river. Not neither wanting to cross really. Eventual spirit. They do not have uphill vision. She four stabs in and swaps. But he runs out. The surfer wards come out. Emperor spirit jumps in. Oh, Exorcism comes down up. Before he gets Chrono off. That's huge. That's huge. Surfer wards still up. Uh, uh, yeah, he's Dazzle will die. This fight. Nope. Never mind. She decides that she's uh, not up for this. And once again. Because TA is not fighting with their team, Radiant gets uh, gets the jump on Dyer. Yes, it's been the problem with the Dyers is that they've been doing a uh, 4v5 the whole time, and outside the TA, none of them have that much farm. The TA is being very impressive, but if you look at the net worth and the net graph, they're both slowly turning the waves of Radiant despite the TA. The net, the the net, um, the XP is already oh, by the way of the radiant, and uh, only the TA is keeping them ahead. She does start, she get turns into a sheep, and she does start attacking. One, two, three shot on the um, Ember Spirit, but he does manage to uh, sear and change to dodge that last shot. But one more shot will do the trick. Huge, this uh, this TA is hitting too hard right now. Absolutely. If the, she sticks with her team, she will wreck oh, them. Jesus. As we see right here. Once again, the, the Skyrath getting caught out. Faceless Void sitting out here. He does have his Chrono, but Skyrath is down and the Ember Spirit is out. So neither of them can utilize the Chrono. And the uh, Serpent Wards will be down for another 30 seconds. So they do not have defensive capability here. The Glyph will come out. Faceless Void comes in. Chronos. Gets the TA, but gets lifted oh, up in air. Oh, but gets by the, uh, by the DP, and this is really yes. gonna be bad. Yes, this and the like TA's refraction was six. Here. Nope, never mind. She had, she had six, um, shields, she had six layers of refraction, so, um, she survived everything they threw at her. And they will transition this into a bot tower push. The faceless void out. Um, Ember Spirit is online. He can come in, but Ember Spirit, all he has is uh, face boots and drum. He has 1,000 sitting in the bank, but he does not. He's not anywhere close to going Battle Fury, and I think at this point in the game, do you think it's still viable for him to try to build that, or do you think it would be better if he went for something smaller? Ember Spirit's extremely good against teams with little to no lockdown. Um, does. His mid game is heavily based on his spells, um, as opposed to his physical damage, where late game is physical damage is what comes into play the most. Um, it's similar with TA, but the thing is, TA just hits far harder and she's a ranged hero. So I think that she definitely has the advantage here. Um, and basically, what I'm trying to say with this is that um, the Ember Spirit really does not have a good matchup against any of these heroes. Um, the Centaur has. Uh, a good lockdown measure, because if if Ember's not able to jump through his remnants, he's really just 1,200 hit points of HP and a few auto attacks, um, which the TA can heavily deal with, noting that she's hitting for 400 right now. Melt strikes. Yep, and they're taking out the Roshan. TA is left alone to finish off Roshan. Um, they do go back in, but they will get the Roshan. Um, Tia will pick it up, dropping her scroll. Uh, so really, she has two lives now. I do not think that they will be able to withstand her. They need to get a chrono on her, and then manage use the mystic flare. Cause mystic flare is what like how many ticks of damage is that? It's enough to remove her shell really fast. Yeah, it's really something. There's a lot of ticks right there. Um, yeah. 
that's the main thing. They need to get rid of the refraction shells from TA, because that's what's kept her alive so far this whole game. Top, they're rotating top, coming from underneath. They will catch him out. Faceless Void um, will, Boy, get will get bursted down. Absolutely blown Absolutely. One shot it by TA after being at half health. TA is just absurdly overpowered right now. She's she is higher net worth than the next two heroes combined. Almost another thousand, and she'll be higher than the next three heroes combined. Yeah, this this is looking dire for the raid in. Serpent Wards come out, trying to push him off, but the Exorcism still goes on. Taking down the tower very low. The tower will go down. The Ember Spirit jumps in, deals a bunch of damage. Uh, tower still gets standing. They should consider denying it. It's at 81 health. The Wraith King gets slowed down, but he oh, starts chrono. reincarnating. Fist Sword jumps in. Huge what a chrono. beautiful Chrono. But they don't Four focus man the chrono. Templar Assassin. They don't focus the Templar Assassin. They completely ignored her because of her refraction and because of her eight, um, Aegis. But I do not think that's that. He's hitting for 300 when her refraction's activated. Absolutely insane. Oh, big she is getting very low. We'll go down though due to the supports. So we have a two for three trade, but the TA is left alone and will survive. Um, she has a BKB now. Uh, Nothing but a Corona will stop her now. Yeah, and she had Aegis in that fight as well, um, and it's still up. Still up a few more minutes. So, this, I guess Radiant made a decent decision in that they focused uh, the other heroes because they knew that they couldn't bring her down twice. But um, mm -hmm. it still means that she gets off scot free and still has a second life for a few more minutes. Absolutely. She really it's is definitely, scary right now. Yeah. Um, net worth we're looking at, it's pretty impressive. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just laughing at how far ahead the TA is. If it wasn't for the TA, it would be a very even game. Um, yeah, XP, 3,000. Yeah, 3,000 <laughs> ahead for, uh, for Dire, and 15, 17,000 ahead in net worth. Um, worth. Their, the net worth of the Dire is almost double the net worth of the Radiant, total. Yep. Um, one interesting thing I want to talk about uh, is Wraith King's build. Now, Wraith King is a decent carry in my opinion. I don't think he's too good. I think he gets kited pretty easily. Um, he does hit hard if you have a lot of lockdown on your team, especially with this crit. But Wraith King is building uh, what AC. I can see to be an AC. Uh, he has no damage items thus far, um, so I'm not sure. The armor's good against the TA, but is his other damage going to be enough to like win team fights? I really don't think so. He's essentially a walking stun and a tank, and that's it. Pretty much, he is a tank, but yet uh, he put uh, three points in Mortal Strike, which will only give him a 250, 250 um, hit, which is what TA hits for normally. Yeah. And TA so hits for his crits, for his yeah. crits that take 15% chance is what TA hits normally, excluding the the melt strike. That is the Skyrath is in deep trouble. Skyrath. Puts down Mystic Flare, brings down the um, Centaur to half health, but Centaur is just so tanky. Him at half health is absolutely not a problem. I have no understanding why TA right now is in her own jungle farming. Um, she's the one with the Aegis. She should be fighting with her team. This is Absolutely. questionable decision making. I think what they should actually do, what they should consider, is have the the um, the DP with say the Dazzle and the Vengeful um, pushing in on one side and the TA and the Centaur on the other side, just to push in two lanes. Yeah, that that would be probably decent. But I think that that they can definitely just five man down and not lose anything. Um, and when Absolutely. the fight, as long as TA isn't locked down. And uh, mm -hmm. I think the way they do this is they have to finish off, either make sure that Void's Chrono is poor, or uh, make sure that he doesn't get that Chrono off. Because exactly. the Chrono is the only thing that's keeping them in this fight right now. Yeah, Game and runner. another thing to mention is that 
everything that they f put on everything that they do on TA, which is going to take a lot to kill her, that leaves the other four heroes free to utilize their spells and uh, such. So really, the TA is like a whole other team. Thirty seconds on uh, on the Aegis here, so we're not going to see that expended. Yes, we're not. I mean, they are gearing up for a push mid, but the tier really has to be careful that she doesn't um, forget about the Aegis timing. The TA is very focused on the farming aspect. She's taking every possible second to farm. She has 223 last hits at 28 minutes in the game. Yeah, I think it's a bit greedy, although... Um, I don't think that it really matters in this game, seeing as how far she's ahead. As long as they push within the next 10 minutes, it's going to be hitting yeah. harder than everyone else, so matter too much. Exactly. The only thing that they do have to be careful is that at some point, the Faceless and the um, Ember Spirit will get their stuff. And once they do, the Faceless is just absolutely one of the worst heroes to push into if he has any farm whatsoever. Currently he has the Maelstrom and Mask of Madness, so he can already do a substantial amount of damage. Those two alone are enough to do a lot, but um, once he gets, uh, once he upgrades his, uh, his uh, Maelstrom, or if he gets uh, something like a um, something like a basher or something except something else to really utilize it. I would even say that a very viable pick would be in Agnums. If he could get that farm in the next uh, five, five, six, seven minutes before they lose too much, he, the Agnums would be really great as a counter for the Chrono um, with uh, 60 seconds always down. I do agree, however, I don't think that, I think that, that this uh, Radiant team needs physical damage, and the Wraith King certainly isn't providing that. The Embers is mostly magical, so the the, BKB, or, uh, the TA's BKB right now is really quite effective outside of Chrono, um, and I think that the, the Faith just needs to build damage. I think he needs um, mm -hmm. some sort of a crit, or maybe even, uh, maybe even finish that Mjolnir, or Maelstrom. Okay. Yeah, so Crystallis maybe. Yeah, so we have the um, Ember Spirit almost finishing up his Battle Fury, only 200 away from it, um, which will enable him to give him some physical damage and uh, against those pushes that come in the five man, uh, five man um, uh, sleight of fists. is still farming jungle, jungle with the DD rune. Uh, she's looking for a butterfly, which uh, I, I think don't once think that comes is the up, best decision. They, yeah, it's What's definitely that? not. I said once that comes up, I think that's really the ideal time to start pushing in because the centaur just got his AC, um, really giving him the advantage, um, and the uh, the dazzle. Now nah, he has nothing. The um, Venture Fear also has nothing, but the, although, it's, um, the, the Death Prophet is just got her Reaver, so she's probably looking yeah, to get a heart. I think the reason I don't like the, uh, the Butterfly build on TA too much is that it's actually just completely worthless against Void as long as you're in Chrono. You just, uh, any sort of, um, evasion doesn't work against Chrono yeah. Fear. Yeah, she, she, I think if she really wanted that damage, she should have gotten an MPKB or something. That would probably have been better. Um, yeah, just to I get mean, those that would be, she already hit super hard. Um, honestly, just either way you look at it, she's probably going to be fine with whatever she has right now. But uh, I think that, in general, Butterfly is not a great item against uh, Faceless Void. Yeah, for sure. Um, something, something a little more sustainability or something. Yeah, perhaps. All this, yeah, ex especially being caught in the Chrono. Um, but uh, she just finished that up now, so I think this should be where the push comes. Absolutely. They all got major items in the last three minutes. DP she gets be caught definitely. out. Oh, she heals herself. Um, and we'll walk away. Yeah, she's fine. Um, we have a five-man 
push coming up top. We also have the five man defensive oh, standby. Oh my gosh, this Wraith King. Did Absolutely you see that? gets blown up. Faceless Void comes in, Kronos catches to the the um, TA, oh, but gets Yules. So he will not. The TA absolutely Outrageous demolishing. Damage. That's game right there. Fly that is definitely the fourth, game. No chrono. Um, chasing down there's the uh, Ember Spirit. That's a dead. Dead Ember Spirit Ember. and the um, Exorcism. Exorcism oh, dealing dead. a lot he's of dead. damage. Rampage. Now. Double Rampage. Oh. Double Jig rampage. diving into the fountain oh, to get Jesus. the five man wipe. That's, seven man that's wipe a, with a double buyback. Wipe. That's a six kill uh, rampage there for TA, and that I, I'm gonna see a GG here coming out in the next 30 seconds. Not Absolutely really surprised. None of them have their ults up. They are all dead. They all died back. There's absolutely nothing you're gonna do. They might as well just push down mid, but no, they're going for mega creeps just to rub it in their faces. Cause this, absolutely. my friends, is GG. There is no way they can come back from this. Mega creeps coming in, and um, there might be one last stand, but there's no way to death push. All they have to do is just keep throwing themselves and the GG. There we go. There we go. This is the GG. We could and, see uh, TA go down. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> and oh, uh, BU takes the victory, and they will be getting a. Uh, why don't you explain to them what they won? Well, it's actually a best of three, as far as I know. Is that correct? Or oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, two more games. You can listen to us for two more games. <laughs> yeah. Congrats, guys. You won the prize. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real prize here. All right, my name is Maniac Got 14. This is my partner Insomnia. Check me out on Twitch, Maniac Got 14, and him on. Uh, I don't know. What's your Twitch ID? I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, check me out on Twitch, Maniac Got 14, and be sure to give me a follow. If you like this, make sure you follow AVG League, uh, American Video Game League, and uh, we'll see you next game.